Hello everyone and good evening. Uh, welcome back to Natura's Homeopathy for the Home webinar series. Um, for those of you who are new, a big welcome to you as well. We are on to episode five already, can you believe it? And we hope you have all thoroughly enjoyed the series so far. For those of you who have missed the previous talk, just send me an email um, and I'll share the links to the talks with you. Welcome also to Chiquita again. Thank you so much for um, all that you've done for us. You're an amazing person and we have very much enjoyed your talks and look forward to tonight's one as well. And the focus is on insomnia. Um, remember to have your booklet at the ready to take notes and ask any question you may have in the chat box and one of our team will get back to you as soon as possible. I'll now hand over to Chiquita. Please enjoy the talk everyone and we'll see you afterwards. Thank you, Jane. Good evening, everybody. We better get going because tonight I have two little talks for you. So we're going to do some housework now. This is this is sort of homework, housekeeping. It's how to store your remedies, how to take them and things like that. So you must always remember that homeopathic remedies need to be taken in a clean mouse. They need to be taken away from food and drink of any kind. They are supposed to be taken on what I call a naked mucous membrane. So everyone gets a bit righteous when looking at this chap because his food has extended past his mouth, um, but it isn't what you're eating. It's the fact that you are eating. So even this lady with her um, incredibly healthy choice, this is still a no-no. You need to take it at least 10 minutes before or an hour after food and drink of any kind. Is If anyone has their mic open, please will you mute yourselves? Thanks. Then food also means liquid with a taste. So a milkshake, a smoothie, a glass of fruit juice, Coke, uh, anything other than water. So I want a clean mucous membrane and no taste of anything else. So if you had a boiled sweet 10 minutes ago, wait. If you had chewing gum in your mouth, mm -mm. okay, so and especially coffee, oh la la. Coffee has a very strong taste. If you can still taste something in your mouth, and especially when you're only taking something once a day, that one dose is going to be wasted. If you're trying to treat something like something more acute, and we'll speak about different dosing techniques, but then you take it when you need it. And you just ignore the fact that you may have had something to eat half an hour ago because you're going to have another dose soon. But if it's a single dose a day, then you need to make sure that that dose is not compromised. Then these things, ooh la la, mint, specifically antidotes, homeopathic remedies. It is one of the ones that we list in all the Materia Medicus, this remedy, that remedy, the next remedy, all antidoted specifically by mint. So please, if you are taking a dose of homeopathics, don't be eating lots of chewing gum, having mints and menthols and things in your mouth. Mint, menthol, um, wintergreen, and eucalyptus. So mint specifically, including toothpaste. So you always take your homeopathic remedies away from when you've cleaned your teeth, not brush your teeth, <sighs> pop the homeopathics. No. Then, oh la la. <sighs> these strong smelling things, they will kill your homeopathics. Please don't store them with these things. Um, I know this is South Africa. So um, uh, Zambuk, they are Zambuk families in this country where Zambuk is treated almost like it belongs on a pedestal. I have met you, if you are a Zambuk person. You gargle with Zambuk. When you have a sore throat, you put it on sunburn. I've even had people swallowing chunks of it to treat worms. So um, when you are taking homeopathics, no Zambuk. And try and stay away from the Vicks Vapor Rub and the Ingram's Camphor and the Tiger Balm and the Olbos Oil. Anything with a really, really strong eucalyptus smell is going to kill the homeopathics. Perfumes. Please don't take or keep your homeopathics around strong perfumes. It will compromise them. Incense, the same. <clears throat> they are very strong scents and they will affect how effective your homeopathics are. Smelly candles, same as incense. Please don't store your homeopathics with them and don't, um, don't inhale large amounts of strong smelling menthol, eucalyptus, wintergreen, peppermint, etc. Um, when you are taking homeopathics. Then cleaning products. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to find a picture that didn't have brand names on. 
So this, this picture is for all cleaning products. Please don't store your homeopathics next to um, the nasty smelling things in the bottom of a kitchen cupboard. And if you have one bathroom cupboard and you use it for everything, top shelf for medicines and toilet paper, bottom shelf for things like um, the toilet duck, Please don't do that with your homeopathics. I don't care if they're in a nice Tupperware. Please store them somewhere else. Because if you compromise your homeopathics by storing them with something and they are no longer actually going to work, you take them and you expect them to work, but you've stored them wrong. So they are no longer going to function. So people ask me, oh, but I've been keeping, I've been keeping all my all my natural remedies in the same thing as, as my old boss oil and it leaked a little bit. And there was some Vicks Vapor Rub in the same box. Please throw those products away. They are not going to work anymore. If you can smell a strong smell around where you have been storing your homeopathics, throw them away and start fresh, please. You don't want to want to trust a product and it's already been compromised. It's not a good idea. Um, and, and it will cloud how well you think and feel and experience your homeopathic products. Then how much should I take? This is a tricky question. So we're going to look about how often do I take a dose? Now, a dose of homeopathics, it's on the bottle. We've made it idiot proof at Natura. So there is a dose for each thing on the bottle. When it says 15 drops under the tongue, you need to put it under your tongue, drop, 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 and then swirl it around in your mouth. Get it exposed to as much mucous membrane as possible. Wait the count of 10 and then swallow. If it's tablets, it's usually two dissolved under the tongue. If it's Nerviton 2, you swallow those suckers with a bit of water. Please do not chew them. Then, how often should I take a dose? This is case dependent. Homeopathic remedies are taken according to need. How much stimulation and how much nudging does your body need for a specific condition? So when there is a raging problem, lack of fever, Something is acute. Something is happening right now. Your body is paying very much attention to it. You can help your body by nudging it regularly. Every 10 or 15 minutes, you can take a dose of the appropriate homeopathic remedy, and it will help you get through the crisis point of that problem. So a raging sore throat. Um, sore throat's a nice one. Really bad diarrhea, a fever, sinus pain, earache, something like that. But when you're trying to treat wart, you can take remedies every five minutes. You really can, but it's not going to help. Warts are a viral condition on your skin, and we are helping your body to strengthen its immune response to that virus. And as the skin layers slough away, the wartiness gets narrower and shallower and shallower, and eventually there's no more wart. But it does take time. It's not going to be affected by having it dosed and dosed and dosed every half an hour, every two hours. So when treating a wart, you dose once a day. If you're treating something long-term like heavy periods or um, that's insomnia, et cetera, long-term tendency towards something, usually you dose once or twice a day, not more frequently than that. Remember this, this discussion we had last time about what to expect from dosing and what to expect from treatment. Your problem, if you have you have done things and, and the environment or, or the virus or whatever that you're fighting is, is very active. It's going to, the homeopathics will slow down the speed with which it was increasing. Then it will come to a stop. The symptoms will stop getting worse. Then they will slowly start getting better in reverse. Slowly, slowly, slowly until that speeds up. And that's the response that you can expect with homeopathics. It's not going to be wham, it fixes it in a single dose. It's going to, to be dependent on what was stimulating that in the first place. And also you need to remember if there is a maintaining cause for the problem, you need to get rid of that first. You need to identify and get rid of a maintaining cause. I tell patients if there is a log, if there is a big chunk of stuff in your eye, it doesn't matter how much eye drops you use. You need to take the log out of your eye and then the, 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 the eye drops will start working um, because yeah, you have to fix the maintaining cause. Homeopathic remedies, when you put a, a single dose into a person, it's more like throwing a pebble into water and it affects the body like ripples and ripples and ripples and ripples. Every small dose is a ripple. And we want the ripples to keep going. 
So we take a small dose and a small dose and a small dose. It's a nudge, nudge, nudge. When you throw a rock in, it's still going to make one layer of ripples. So it doesn't matter how big a dose you take. So you take the dose that's on the bottle. It says two tablets. Taking 10 tablets is still a single dose. It is time dependent. It is always going to be a nudge, regardless of the size of the dose you take. So don't think drinking half a bottle of Servo is going to help exam stress more than a dose of 15 drops three times a day. It is not the way homeopathics work. It is always going to be a nudge in the right direction. It's never going to be a bludgeon. You'll do this. It doesn't work that way. The more little pebble doses you stick in, the more ripples happen. And if something is that fire burning, lack of fever, lots of little doses keep the ripples going and keep the energy flowing through the body and having and, and focusing on what you are sick with right now. So those doses are frequent and something like a wart once a day. Okay, so that's basic housekeeping. I'm going to stop my screen. We have another, um, my mouse is on. We have another poll for you about the next, um, about the next topic, which is the second half of stress and insomnia. And I'm going to ask Adele to stick that on the screen now. If anyone has any questions, there is a, there is a panelist here who is very good at typing and um, not making spelling errors. That's why there's such a slow response if I get to do um, the questions because my typing is very much dependent on um, the correcty thing that Word provides. So um, Adele, if you wouldn't mind putting up that next, um, the next poll, please. It's up. Grand. It's the same it's the same moment baby one that came up. Yes. It's the third one on the choices. Um Trace. Sorry guys, I can't choice. um Adele, can you have a look at that? I can't get to it. Okay, jokes. I'm gonna close that. No, okay, we'll do it at the end. That's fine. Don't stress. I uh, will just adapt and change the order of things. Chiquita, it is up. Is it? Okay, Grant. It's up, yeah. So we have 53% um, saying yes, that they are aware that they um, that Natura has a new mom and baby range. 29% um, no, and 18% um, says they already use it. Have you... Got the question poll about stress and anxiety products. Yeah. Could you put that one up for me, please? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, um, we'll just wait for them to answer. Are you Either. currently taking anything for anxiety, stress, and insomnia? Let's see. Guys, you can um, you can answer. It's not up. It's up on my side. Adal, can you see it? Okay, I'm going to leave you guys to figure out what's going on with that one because I don't know how Zoom works. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it to the experts and we can carry on. Um, okay. Okie dokes. Here we are. Slideshow, slideshow. Mm. Hang on a sec. Screen sharing is paused. Stop share. Right, sorry, folks. We are having all kinds of technical difficulties tonight. Goodness gracious. There we go. Happy days. Okay, jokes. So last time we spoke about stress, and I alluded to insomnia and insomnia and insomnia. For me. This is the most frequent time that people actually recognize that they are under stress because they stop sleeping. They will chew their fingernails. They will grump at their family members. They will feel ratty with their 
Um, they will feel ready with people at work. They will feel hot, flushy when, when under stress. They will drop things and they will be out of breath. They will be agitated. They will get headaches. And none of that will be like, I think I'm under stress. But as soon as they stop sleeping, hmm, now people start paying attention. I think I'm a bit stressed. And actually, insomnia is one of the last things that uh, you experience. It's when there's a chemical change in the hormones that govern stress and sleeping, when you start to recognize, oh, there's a problem. Because there's a very delicate balance in our bodies. It sounds like a disaster movie. There's a delicate balance. But there is a delicate balance between melatonin and cortisol. And when you are fighting a lion, fighting a lion, fighting a lion, or running away, um, that is adrenaline. So your body produces large amounts of adrenaline, and you feel a bit jittery when the moment is over because you know, there's no real lions in, in modern life. But when it's not a lion and your body says, ah, it's been a lot of lions, maybe it's a drought, and you start to produce cortisol as a chronic stress hormone, it fights with the melatonin because as you build sun exposure all day remember paleolithic humans lots of sun exposure we have to find the food we're going to eat it's not available at woolies down the road we had to go and find it so lots of sun exposure lots of melatonin gets produced and as it peaks during the day we go to sleep ping sort of sleepy time half past nine ten ish and then as you're sleeping the melatonin level starts to drop and the cortisol level in your blood starts to rise and it peaks Ping, at about half past five, six, and you become awake. Ching, morning time. Now, when you are under stress and your cortisol level has been rising, it's like the race isn't fair. The cortisol level is starting the relay race at the 50 meter mark, and you wake up cha -ching, at two o'clock in the morning, and your body says, It's morning time. Shh, wake up, you, and you're desperate. Oh, I can't, it's two in the morning. And you lie there and your body is wide awake. It's because the cortisol level has morning level peaked because your stress hormone has already, it's been there for a couple of weeks. So we need to look at ways to help your body to combat stress and how to help your body reset that balance between melatonin and cortisol. One of the most important things you need to do to reestablish natural sleeping patterns and to enhance the quality of the sleep that you get is something called sleep hygiene. Now, sleep hygiene, people go, uh, sorry, what? What are you talking about, sleep hygiene? And they all think about those, um, those hoarder people. Sleep hygiene, right? It's the hygiene in the bedroom. Um, it's not. Sleep hygiene is, that's another example of not sleep hygiene. Um, sleep hygiene is all about the environment in which you sleep, including a lot of variables, including and not limited to how much blue light you are exposed to. So the more blue light you're exposed to, specifically from screens and from tube lights, those lovely tube lights that they have in, in big open offices, and in factories and large open areas like retail spaces, those strip lights encourage your body and blue light from cell phones, screens, computers, laptops, etc. encourage your body to build more cortisol. And unfortunately, it just makes the situation worse. So the limiting blue light is going to help. What isn't blue light is a Kindle and a, an e-reader. That is a magnetic ink screen it is not blue light but if you're reading books on your cell phone that is definitely blue light then oof, these guys lots and lots of blue light coming from that the more sunshine you get the more melatonin you produce healthy levels of melatonin are the best way to combat extra cortisol it's how warm and fuzzy the whole family feels after a day at the beach lots of sun exposure everybody sleeps beautifully that night. It's important that you get enough healthy sunshine. We're terrified of skin cancer and it is a valid concern. Do not get burnt, but don't be terrified of sun exposure either. We need to find a healthy balance between the two. You need good sunlight. And that's why everyone's mood is elevated in summer and 
people in Europe who have such long, dark winters actually have to get themselves special lamps to help their bodies produce a fake level of melatonin because they can't go out because they're in the land of the midnight, no sun. Um, it's my brother lives in Canada and uh, it's quite miserable. There's just, there's just too much darkness in the winter time. We also need to move. The more you move, the more your body relaxes. It needs good stretch exercises. I don't mean you need to go and work out like mad and exhaust yourself. In fact, that's a bad idea. Exercising at night is going to be very counterproductive because the only time human beings exercise like that in a natural environment, we're not, we're not in our natural environment now. We don't live the lives that our physiology is designed for. So when a Paleolithic human runs or is in a, in a spinning class and is exercising to the nth degree, we don't do that for fun. We do that to run away from something or to catch supper. So it's not natural for us to suddenly catch the lion or run away from the lion or catch something and go, oh, okay, it's bedtime. That's not going to happen. When you exercise to, to, a, to a serious degree, your body is doing it knowing that, that you're alive and you're awake. And when you ran away from a lion, it was not suddenly, the lion's gone now, okay, it's bedtime. So if you're going to do rigorous exercise, please try and do it before 12 o'clock. It is great to exercise in the, in the late afternoon, but don't do heavy, heavy exercise. If you are struggling to sleep, this may be one of the things that's contributing to it. If you have no trouble sleeping and you exercise, fantastic, go for it. Whenever you can, go out. But if you're struggling to sleep, try and put your rigorous exercise in the morning and more of your stretching program and relaxed exercise like a walk in the evenings. But don't run away from the lion um, at night. Then, next slide. See, just, it's not natural. Then, another thing. <laughs> we read books like this because there is no terror in our everyday lives. So, we find it entertaining. You won't find survivors of a Holocaust or survivors of, of serious violence enjoying scary, terrifying books. They've lived the real thing. They're not interested. But for, for the average human being, these are quite entertaining because they give you an adrenaline rush. <sighs> And it's fun, but it's not fun if you're then going to put the book down, put the book down and go to sleep. Not so much. So try and limit the amount of scary, thriller, horror, scary stuff that you read at night. If you're struggling to sleep, if you have anxiety, please don't read this sort of stuff at night. It's not going to help you sleep. Again, please don't be looking on YouTube for all the depressing and sad stories that you can find about our current situation and political stuff and things that rile you up. The drought situation, the water issues, the political climate, anything that is making you feel agitated, despairing for the future. Um, it's 2021. There's plenty to pick. Um, but don't have this kind of serious discussion or reading material or exposure to stuff online and social media just before bed. I know a lot of people get into bed, they're warm and comfy, and then they go onto Facebook and they start getting agitated by all the stuff they read there. Please don't do that if you're struggling to sleep. Try and do something restful <sighs> before sleeping. Don't make it harder for your body to switch off. Don't drink coffee at night. Hmm. It's a stimulant for a reason. I know, I know a lot of people who say, oh, but I can drink coffee just before bed. If you're struggling to sleep, try not to drink coffee after sort of two in the afternoon. Just, just don't and see how it goes for a while. If you find that you're getting headaches because you haven't had a cup of coffee for a few hours, you need to address the fact that you are now becoming physically addicted to caffeine and uh, take steps to combat that. Then, oh... Heartburn keeps a lot of people from a good night's sleep. And it's also a problem for people who don't get heartburn, but digestion is not something your body wants to be doing while sleeping. So eating hard to digest foods Melted cheese and overcooked meat are specifically difficult to digest. Chewing gum in, the, in that hard melted chocolate, ugh, melted chocolate, that's not a problem. Melted cheese, it's like, 
it's like stretchy, bouncy stuff. And your body produces extra stomach acid to try and digest that. And also if you eat a long grain animal, so beef, um, lamb, mutton, specifically mutton, and it's cooked quickly. So the mutton, the like a bri, so a piece of steak, it's had a chance to tighten too much and not relax. So a stew is easier to digest than a, a well-cooked piece of steak. It's very difficult to digest and it might give you heartburn and it might make it difficult for you to sleep. So make the choices of meals um, easier to digest if you're struggling to sleep. Also eat well before, well before it's bedtime. Um, yeah, melted cheese. Midnight snack is nonsense. Nobody needs food in the middle of the night. You just don't need it. It's not a good thing. You Anybody feel any sleepier? It's not a good idea. A glass of warm milk? Yes, there's a thing called new scene in warm milk. It does actually make you sleep better. Um, it's a calmative and it's what makes babies get a like eh, go, 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 after they've been breastfeeding. It's called new scene and uh, warm milk. Yeah. Then another thing for sleep hygiene, very important is the ventilation in the room. If you are not getting good air in and out, you're going to wake up feeling dopey and partially hungover and not have quality sleep. Also, the uh, small people um, of the woofy variety in your bed is not a good idea. Um, they might start, <laughs> uh, you know what it's like when you get into a bed and it's newly freshly made up with clean linen. Please change your bedding frequently if you're struggling to sleep. The, the quality of sleep is actually improved with clean linen. Then find a position that is comfortable for you so that your body is supported and not in an awkward angle that you're going to wake up uncomfortable. If you are overweight, specifically ladies, if your hips are larger than average, put a, hip per pillow, a pillow between your legs. It will help your hips not to feel so achy and your lower back won't hurt if you sleep on your back. Get a good pillow. Don't scrunch up your neck. You will feel tired and tight when you wake up in the morning. A good pillow, you can't go wrong. Then <laughs> please deal with someone in your family who is snoring. There are ways to deal with snoring. Take this person to a homeopath. Um, there was a lovely TV program several years ago. I think it was called Louise Motors. And um, the missus at Louise Motors had had enough. Um, and she sewed um, empty cotton reels into the back of her husband's shirt because if he slept on his back, he snored. And if he didn't, he, he didn't um, snore. So please try and deal with snoring. If somebody in your family has sleep apnea, then deal with that problem. It's usually being overweight that causes sleep apnea but have it looked at as a matter of urgency. If someone else is snoring is keeping you awake, it's something that needs addressing. Then barking dogs. Oh, living in town, this can be a problem. But if your dogs are barking, please deal with that because it's not causing only a problem for you, but it starts the whole neighborhood. And if you can fix one small problem, fix that. Um, small people do not belong in your bed. They belong in their bed. Uh, no. No. This, this, is, this is a problem for me. People say, oh, no, but I'm not sleeping well. Is your kitty in your bed? Yeah, no, just no, no. How long are they going to stay in your bed? Are they going to be 10 and still in your bed? They need to sleep in their bed. If there's a problem and they sleep in your bed for a few days, that's fine. But then they need to go back into their bed. When I speak to parents, I'm very firm on this issue. Children need to learn a normal, which is suitable for the rest of their lives. Snuggling in with mommy all night and taking over mommy's bed is not normal. Mm -mm. and you can be firm with your small people the world is going to be firm with them when they leave house they need to learn firm from someone who loves them so little people in your bed no oh they're very cute when they come home they are darling and you want to snuggle with them So please have small, don't have babies, uh, baby dogs in your bed because they will become big dogs. So pets in the bed is the number one cause of disturbed sleep in children. And the pattern continues. So yeah, pets in the bed. Now people, if you're struggling to sleep, ditch the, ditch the dogs. Then no snoozing. Oh, I can't tell people enough of this. When you wake up in the morning, your body has finished a circadian rhythm. Cha-ching, get out of bed. Do it. 
if you go back to sleep and you kind of, oh, and then the alarm clock goes, the alarm clock goes off. And again, and again, you wake up more sleepy for the rest of the day and you don't get as good a sleep that night. Your body is confused about which circadian rhythm position it's in. When you wake up, especially if you're having struggles with maintaining a healthy sleep pattern, when you wake up, get out of bed. It's the most important thing you can do to help retrain your body in a healthy sleeping pattern. Don't press the snooze button. Then uh, don't fall asleep in front of the TV. As soon as you start feeling dopey, switch it off. Go and do something calm in your bedroom, then go to sleep. Snoozes. Naps can be 20 minutes, no longer. Don't sleep for an entire sleep pattern in the middle of the day. If you're trying to reestablish a natural, healthy circadian rhythm, sleeps in the afternoon, it's not going to help. Right, let's talk about the remedies for this. Have you got your papers? I hope you've got your papers because we can make notes now. Valeriana, Valerian officinalis. This is a herb. It's incredibly bitter. It is um, very bitter. It's available in a herbal and a homeopathic dose. And the way they work is slightly differently. Now, the herbal version is for also for sleep, but it comes in a million versions. It is a sedative in a herbal dose. It will put you to sleep. And if you take too much, you will wake up feeling ugh, a little bit hungover, just like taking a normal heavy sedative sleeping tablet. This is the herbal dose. The homeopathic, on the other hand, is more of a, it's a calmative sleep encouragement rather than you will sleep now, so help me. It's to stop that mouse that goes on the wheel. And when people use valerian during the day in a homeopathic dose, it's also for thoughts that look like this, that really should look like this. This is the best analogy. It's that I had a friend who was teaching first grade in a school where there was 34 kids in a class. And instead of having 24, she had 34 and there was no teaching aid. And these children were learning for the very first time in their lives to read, write, do maths, sit in their chair, wash their hands after using the toilet, put your hand up when you need to speak. And they were all learning this in their second language. And they were first generation literate. So mom and dad couldn't read and write. She was in a very big school with very little um resources and there was two versions of this person there was the term version who drank a lot of red wine and then there was the holiday version of this person who drank the odd gin and tonic and um, I said to none no, of my friends we, we need to sort this out because it would be ah, at the end of the day so I gave her some Nervaton too and instead of going ah, during the day she was sort of Oh, Susan, please get off the table, sweetie. It's okay. You need to come down off the table now. Susan, it's time to get off the table. And she could do that all day. <laughs> and the term version was, was less into the red wine and she just felt less <sighs> overwhelmed. And it works fantastically. So this stressed, <laughs> very stressed person from stress from the environment, valerian in a homeopathic dose just takes the sharp edges off that stress. And it's a Nervaton 2 and stress less tonic. It's the main active ingredient in those two. Then the next remedy is pulsatilla. Now we met pulsatilla when we did colds and flus and things like that. Pulsatilla was that little person who's very sweet and very cute and very needy. Very, very needy. Now in stress, there's a difference. They're very needy. They need constant affirmation. So if you know someone who needs this, they are very seldom not in a relationship. They need to be needed. They need to be liked. And unfortunately, that leads to a certain level of stress that they put on themselves. You all know one of these. They have pushed themselves to achieve and the stress is there because they have to impress other people and they have to make other people happy and they will turn themselves into a pretzel to do that. We often see this in children, we see this in teenagers, and we see this in people who've had very strong parents who are very demanding and have pushed their kids very hard. And the more they achieve, the more they feel loved and adored. 
unfortunately, there's only so much you can do and they get very, very tired. Um, so if you see this kind of stress, this is a pulsatilla stressed person. They're trying to please everybody and keep everyone happy by doing the absolute bestest and put out fires for everyone else. Um, they get spread very, very thin and they start getting tearful and they got start getting more clingy to their loved ones and they start feeling very wobbly um, when under stress. So that's a pulsatilla. Pulsatillas, stress less tonic. Um, they take it in the morning, five mils, or if they go to school or work, etc. Then chamomilla. This is another one where the homeopathic and herbal dose are completely different. In a herbal dose, chamomile tea, <sighs> It's for calming. Homeopathically, we use it for this. It is for grumpy, irritable, touchy, sensitive, angry, defensive people when under stress. They take everything the wrong way. You've, you cannot step lightly enough around these people. They are very sensitive and they don't like to be hugged. Don't try and give, oh, shame, how are you all right? Let me get, ah, they're going to want to tear your hair out. Don't hug this person when under stress. They are very defensive. Now, we had stromonium last time. That's just temper tantrums and aggressive feelings and road rage during stress. This is more touchy, sensitive, resentful, and just, uh, <laughs> it's very, very useful um, in a stress remedy. And they don't want to be hugged. They don't want to be truest. Do not try and console this person. They will hate you for it because you can see their weakness and that just makes it worse. Nervaton too. I'm sure you all have met someone in a chamomile state um, and when under stress. Then gelsemium. Oh, everybody knows the silly princess, right? Yeah. Gelsemiums when under stress, they don't try and fix the problem. They just go, oh, I can't. And they run away. They have this deep-seated belief that they cannot fix the problem. They're not even going to try. So what does this supposed model for young ladies do? She doesn't try and fix the problem. She just runs away and builds herself an ice castle. Not a big fan of that approach. But as a model for young women today, mm, but that is a gelsemium. They will not even try. I, don't, I can't do maths. I can't do maths. I'm not going to even try to do maths. Don't give me extra maths lessons. It's pointless. I just can't do maths. I'm done. Not even going to try. And it's very hard to get through to these people. When they're under stress, they just shut down and refuse to try. They have this deep-seated sense that they cannot do what they need to do. And it's very destructive. They also are worse when exposed to very serious and, and harsh um, spikes of emotion. They go into the state as soon as there's massive emotion around them, whether it's anger or it's fear, specifically fear, big emotional episode. And then, oh, I can't, oh, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You might see this in older folk. Oh, oh. Um, you also see it in teenagers. They just shut down and refuse. I'm done. I can't. Sorry. I'm not even going to try. It's very frustrating trying to help someone like this. And they start stammering when under stress. They, they can't even get their words out. And they can't find the words in their brain. They do a lot of word searching. They, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, 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 have you met people in that state? Gelsemium. And they get sleepy. They get so sleepy. It's like their brain has, their body even, has taken on this message of I can't. So they start doing their, their maths homework and they, they just, um, or they start doing a project that they know they're going to fail at and they get sleepy. And you find them sleeping at their desk. You find them sleeping. As soon as they're faced with stress, they just, they just conk out. It's, um, it's very frustrating dealing with gelsemiums, but it is quite a frequent presentation um, from stress. It's a very nice remedy to have in your arsenal. And you can find it in Serbo. Exam stress, overstudying, and lack of concentration. It works very nicely. Serbo is one of the very nice things to have on hand when things get critical for exam time. Then, ha ha, Nux Farm. Ah, we met Nux Farm a couple of weeks ago. Nux Farms are your grumpies. They don't like being sick and they don't like being stressed. 
and they are very stressful to be around when they're stressed. Um, they, <laughs> they're very impatient. They can do it, so everyone else should be able to do it the same as them, at the same speed as them, and grasp the same concept in the same way immediately. Why isn't this done yet? Why haven't you done this? I told you, and this is how you're supposed to do it. They're very demanding of the people around them and very unforgiving when stressed of other people's failures. And the more stressed they are, the more unforgiving they become, the more short-tempered, the more um, the more difficult they are, the more irritable and the more likely they are to snap and say something to people in a hurtful manner. And they're also very driven. And the more stressed they are, the harder they push themselves. And I love this cartoon. This for me is a Nux farm right there. They, they have no patience for other people to hurry up and just do it now. I want it done. It, get it done. Small towns must frustrate Nux farmers horrendously. My mom lives in a small town and I'm trying to get something done in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> yes, don't want anything on a Thursday or a Friday because, you know, it's the weekend soon. <laughs> Next farms don't like that. Then another thing about them is that they, when they're stressed, they need to keep going and they use stimulants to help them do so. So heavy, rich foods, things like cigars and cigarettes and alcohol and large amounts of coffee, anything that's going to be rich and heavy and satisfying and stimulating and because of all of that, we're going to um, meet them again in the tummy section. They tend to get indigestion when stressed. They're the ones who, uh, and they reach for the antacids, or they're already on heavy medication for that. They usually ignore all their health issues when stressed, and it becomes a real problem before they will address it. So a Nux farm is seldom going to seek help for stress, and if you're a family member of one, it's up to you to nudge them gently with maybe a long stick in, in the right direction. Right, yeah. <laughs> they do much better if they actually start acknowledging their stress and doing things about it. They respond very nicely to exercise and um, to, to making positive changes within a program. You get a lot of heartburn. Ooh, and yes, obviously, temper tantrums, special ones. Next farm, stress less tonic. I love this stuff. Excellent product. Then, la oh, but well, that's the end. <gasps> we really have cut these short. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the last one. I'm going to stop share. Hopefully, Adele and Trace, you guys have that um, new poll for me. If you wouldn't mind putting it on the screen. There we go. Are you currently taking anything for anxiety, stress, and insomnia? We haven't given you any dodgy op options here. So if you are taking any... Um, Things that don't fit in this list, we don't we don't want to acknowledge those. So um, homeopathic, herbal, or prescription. And you can choose more than one. So let us know what you're currently taking, if you're taking anything at all. Um, if you, um, there was, uh, I was speaking to some ladies who are attending this, and um, two of them were speaking to me, and uh, they both they both made their husbands watch the recording of last last week's talk, and um, they hired <laughs> off to Diskim and ended up with um, <laughs> several purple and green bottles. I understand that the hubbies are now taking this tonic, they're sober, and then I mean they really did just cover all the bases and their nerve attack too. And uh, <laughs> and I said to them when we were talking, I said it's been a week. We should have a result by now. And they're like, yeah, 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 they're much calmer. And my husband's sleeping better. So, yay. <laughs> um, and, and, and we have touched two families, sorted. <laughs> my work is done. <laughs> so I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. If we have a result on that, on that poll, then we can have a look and see what people are up to. Ooh, all across the board. Mm. Good. Okay. At least you're doing something about it. If you're not... Hopefully you're not stressed. Okie dokes. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, next week, we are going to talk about allergies. Now, allergies is a big topic. We are going to focus down. We are not going to do all the skin things and all the other things. We're going to talk specifically about hay fever. 
things that you can do to help hay fever, common sense stuff that sometimes you forget, and the homeopathic remedies from Natura, um, the ingredients that are in the remedies for specifically hay fever. And we will talk about all of those next week. It's another one of the shorter ones. It's only about 20 to 25 minutes long. If you have any questions at all, please, if you if you don't want to email Jane at comedhealth.coza um, with, with your questions, if you haven't asked them for our homeopath panelists this evening, um, please would you write them down and bring them next week. If you, hmm... If you think about one during the week, anything at all, there's no such thing as a bad question and it doesn't have to be on topic. So you are welcome to bring us any questions at all and we will answer those um, if you bring them next week. But thank you so much for, for joining us this evening and um, I will see you guys next week. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Chiquita. Thank you absolutely everyone for joining us. And please look out for next week's link to the talk on allergies. And we look forward to that again. And have a wonderful long weekend and a fabulous sleep tonight, I hope, for all of you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye.